Hey everybody, Coach Shane here with SB Endurance. Today I've got a shoe review for you. This is my review of the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Now this is a shoe that has been on the market for most of 2020. It was originally released at the US Olympic Marathon Trials, or at least that's really the first time that we saw it. Um, and then it was available to the general public shortly thereafter. It was supposed to have been released um, in late spring, um, but unfortunately with everything that went on this year, that got pushed back a little. Now I got on the pre-order list and I had mine by mid-June. I think technically they officially released it to the public in July, but like I say, I had mine in mid-June and I put some training miles on mine and then I actually wore this shoe in my one and only marathon that I did this year and it was good enough to help me get a BQ time. So we'll talk a little bit about that and talk a little bit about the shoe itself. Now, this shoe is super light. I'm not sure in the standard men's size nine what it's supposed to weigh, but in my size, which is a 12 and a half, which is a pretty big shoe compared to a lot of runners, um, in my size, I weighed it, it was exactly nine ounces. So that's still quite light um, and I'm more than happy with that. Now, this is one of the carbon plate racing shoes that, that's out there. There's a handful of them right now. And in my marathon, one, two, and three were the Nike Alpha Fly with the pods in it, the newest Nike. Then number two was actually somebody wearing a pair of Ultras. And then I came in third wearing this shoe. In the lead pack, there was one other runner with this shoe. There was a handful of vapor flies out there as well, but you are seeing these out at races. As far as everything I know goes, these are gonna be available throughout the remainder of 2020 here and going into 2021. They're, they're available in some other colors. When they first came out, this was the original color that was available. Now I think there's a red color. I'm not sure if there are any others. I haven't really looked myself. So again, nine ounces, has a carbon plate in it. It's pretty stiff. I mean, this is me really trying to bend it. And you can really feel that when you're running in it. Um, I was very happy with this shoe. I did, uh, before I bought this shoe, I did buy a pair of Alpha Flies and never ran in them and sent them back. Or excuse me, Vapor Flies. I never got the Alpha Flies. I had a pair of Vapor Flies. The reason I sent them back, there was two reasons, and it was just personal preference. It wasn't anything with the shoe. One was their, the stack height on the vapor flies is a lot higher and it's really pushing the limits of what now they're considering legal. And also it's a narrower shoe than what this is. Now this isn't really a wide shoe. It's not as wide as a lot of the ultras that are out there, the road shoes uh, that ultra is making with the wider toe box, but this is a fairly wide toe box. And I've got a fairly wide forefoot. Now I don't need super wide shoes, but I did like that. And I've had good luck with Saucony trail shoes in the past as well. This is really the first Saucony road shoe that I've owned and it worked out great for me. So some other things with this shoe, it's got an eight millimeter drop. So not a super low drop, but not a, a super high uh, angle. When you start getting up into that 10 millimeter or better drop, I just don't like it. Most of the shoes that I run in are five or six millimeters. So eight was even a little bit more than what I'm used to, but it worked out just fine. So again, I wore this in probably about 35 miles worth of training runs, and then I wore it in my marathon. And if you look at the bottom of the shoe, the treads on this are quite a bit more substantial than what are on some of the other carbon plate racing shoes out there, which was a selling point, just because they're gonna have a little bit more durability. And you can see the bottom of these are kind of dirty from the 60 or so miles that I've got on them. But really there's very little wear on the tread, maybe just a little bit on the outside here, which happens on pretty much all of my shoes. I fully expect to get 200 miles out of these, but I'm still trying to use them intelligently between training and racing because this is still a $200 shoe. So it's less than what the vapor flies are selling for and the alpha flies are selling for. It's in the ballpark with some of what Hoka's carbon plate shoes are selling for, but I felt like for the performance you get out of this at $200, it was a great value. Now, 
the thing that people want to know is do these shoes really make you faster and anecdotally i'm going to say yes they do now again because when i had the vapor flies i never ran in them i just tried them on in my house decided they weren't for me and sent them back um, having run in this again i can't compare it to some of the other ones that are out there but having run in this compared to my everyday trainer which is the hoka arahi that probably weighs three to four ounces more than this um, and does not have a carbon plate in it, I would say apples to apples comparison on all my runs, this saves me 10 to 15 seconds a mile. And that's me. I'm a 36 year old, 5'11", 165 pound ro road runner. And I went from, you know, if I'm going out on a threshold run, maybe I'm doing 7'10 to 7'15 mile. And I was doing sub sevens in this thing. I did a sub seven pace 15K in the middle of summer on a really hot day without much issue. So they are saving you time. Now in my marathon, I picked a course that was really advantageous to me. I ran the Sundance to Spearfish, which um, certainly helped my uh, BQ time, but this shoe was great for the entire 26 miles. My feet didn't get sore, I didn't get hot spots, nothing like that. Um, worked out really well for me. I averaged a 640 mile pace during that race and I couldn't be happier with this shoe. So whatever happens in 2021, I'm gonna use this, this exact shoe again. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be doing so many road races in 2021 that I won't get a full another season of use out of this shoe. So, um, I don't have much else to say. You know, the construction's pretty solid. It's not super flimsy. The upper is is uh, pretty good material. I mean, it's actually a woven mesh. You know, it's, it's it it is very different than what you see in those Nikes that are out there. Uh, it does have a gusseted tongue in there. Uh, it comes with two different uh, sets of laces. At least this one did. It came with white and then like a neon green. That's kind of the same color as this material on the inside of the of the shoe and all in all like i say i've been really happy with it so certainly a shoe that i would buy again i'm happy to see that saucony is continuing to make this shoe i think that this is going to be a lead pack shoe or versions of this will be lead pack shoes for a really long time and I, I wouldn't go out and buy this if you're going to try and use it as your everyday trainer because you're probably talking a 200 mile range before it starts to really break down and not be effective for you anymore. If you've got the money to buy shoes that cost $200, so you're basically paying a dollar per mile on your training runs, if you've got that kind of money, go ahead and buy it. Um, it's a great shoe, uh, but most of us don't. You know, the shoes I wear in my training runs probably last me 500 or more miles and cost half of what this does. So it is a very specialty shoe. That carbon plate in there really launches you. It's a cool feeling when you're running in it. Um, again, if you've, if you've had good luck with Saucony's before, definitely get this shoe if you're looking at a road half marathon or marathon in the coming season, you will not be disappointed with this. So. I realize there's probably other things, technical specs or things like that, that I've left out. But again, men's size 12 and a half, nine ounces, eight millimeter drop, $200 with the carbon plate. I think it's a great value. I think it's a great racing shoe. And I think you're gonna see a lot of them out there in those half marathon to marathon distance road races uh, for a lot of years to come. So that is my review of the Saucony Endorphin Pro. They do have uh, two other shoes that are very similar to this. I think it's the shift and the speed that are more for training purposes and aren't quite as costly, but have similar dimensions to them. If you want a trainer that kind of replicates the feel and, and dimensions of the shoe that you're going to race in, but a little heavier and not quite as springy. So that's what I've got to say about the Saucony Endorphin Pro. If you guys found this content helpful, I'd love it if you'd like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below if you've raced in this shoe, what are your thoughts on it? Do you like it? Do you love it? Did you hate it? Is there something you like better? Um, 
Saucony didn't give me these shoes. These I bought with my own money. So just to put that out there, these are my honest opinions on this shoe. I really think it's great. I'm going to keep doing road races in them. Would I wear it in a shorter race? Maybe. Um, I'm not really a racing flats guy. So, you know, if I, but I don't do a whole lot of short races either. If I did a 5K or a 10K, this is a faster shoe than my everyday trainers. So I probably would wear it. Um, but uh, those are my opinions on it. I think it's great. I was really happy with the purchase. I'm glad I went with this for my marathon shoe for this year and we'll be continuing to wear this in 2021. So again, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, please comment, please like the video. I really appreciate it. Um, that's all I've got for you. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.